Hi, and welcome back to another Sky Practice. As those of you um, who've been at the channel for a while know, I like to paint at least one sky a day, often as part of another painting, but generally to keep up that sky practice so I can learn and progress with my skies and sort of with the goal of just really trying to be able to uh, work out how to paint all the different types of nuances and beauty that I see in the skies around me. So I'm going to paint another wet in wet sky today. Um, I want it to be um, a fishing scene. I'm going to have a jetty and a little boat um, and a gentleman just fishing from his small boat. Um, so I'm going to set the scene first by wetting my page and putting some raw sienna across the page. And now this is some cobalt blue and indigo, Payne's grey and sepia across the top of the painting um, and I want to create a large sort of a large dark grey cloud blowing in across the water so it looks as if either a sort of a storm's blowing in or just a change in the weather so I'm looking for as I say a bank of cloud I don't want it to actually be raining but just to pull this bank of cloud diagonally across the sky still leaving some of the blue sky and like the pale gold rays of sun through um, towards the left hand side so I'm tipping and tilting my board using a water spray to loosen up that lovely big cloud um, and you can see how although the paint in the cloud looked really um, heavy and overdone when I first placed it on thickly now that I've sprayed it and tipped and tilted the board it's now thinning out beautifully and turning into this lovely smooth wash that I think really does work well to show this bank of cloud um, moving across the sky. I'm putting in grey water today using my large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush, extra large actually, and just pulling it across the water to create just a very simple scene with some dry brush sparkle on the water, but mostly grey to sort of reflect the oncoming bank of cloud. Everything should just soften and diffuse nicely in that sky. And uh, please note, I've laid my board flat now. Um, I, did, I did that as soon as the cloud bank was in the position where I, I wanted it, just before I painted the water. Um, because if you're painting wet in wet and you have your board tilted, of course, um, any wet paint will tend to run downwards. So placing the board flat when the painting is looking or the sky looks the way you want it to really helps. Now this is my flat brush and I'm just um, neatening up the horizon a little bit while everything's still damp and then I shall sort of just feather and flick through the paint on the left side um, tending towards the left, just bringing these slightly smaller clouds into the sky. And this will give me a sort of look of perspective. Um, so I've got these tiny clouds in the distance and the big bank of cloud is looming overhead. I have to be quick here and be careful that I'm not introducing uh, more sort of watery mixture into the page here, otherwise I'll end up with runbacks and cauliflowers. Now here it is, the painting's dry, and you can see that I've drawn in my fisherman and my fishing boat and the position for my jetty. So using my small calligraphy brush and my flat brush and alternating between the two, I will begin to use my Payne's Grey and Indigo mixture to paint in the figure and the boat and the reflections. I think if you decide to paint skies on a regular basis, then it can be quite interesting to think up little scenes to put below your skies. And anything simple like this can often bring something like a very, very simple, quick, loose sky painting or practice bring it into focus and can just make it look really interesting.
So that's the boat roughed out. Now using the flat brush with side to side sweeping motions, um, just bringing down the indication of some shadows and reflections in the still water. Being careful not to overdo it, but just to give enough of an indication um, which helps to ground the boat in the water and gives it that sort of um, element of realism, um, but, but still fairly sort of loose and abstract. And that should do. And now using the same mixture of paint, inky consistency on the tips of my flat brush, um, I'm going to just run along some short vertical pilings for my jetty. Varying up the thickness um, of these pilings just to add a little bit of interest so it doesn't look too regimented. just using the tips of the brush, which is very, very useful for making these sorts of marks in a loose painting. I'm not gonna put in too much detail, um, but I'm just going to run um, some planks across in a sort of a horizontal line across the top of the jetty where people can walk along um, and then I'll put a few um, diagonal struts underneath across the pilings. Something and nothing really, it's just to kind of suggest that jetty. And then back to my small calligraphy brush and um, the inky consistency Payne's Grey and um, sepia and just bringing down a sort of vertical wriggly line below each one of the pilings uh, for a little suggestion of reflection. Nothing too much, just enough for reflection and shadow. And I've just built up the shadow in the little um, little rowing boat and I'm now painting in the fisherman and the net. Keeping the shape very, very simple just to imply somebody sort of standing up in the boat and either throwing the net out or pulling the net in. And if you notice how the back of the rowing boat is lighter so that that oar shows up against the light, lighter coloured boat and the prow of the boat is in shadow. Now I'm making sure I get some nice fine lines with the very point of my small calligraphy brush um, for the net, just, um, just to suggest that net in the water, not many lines, but enough to create that illusion. Then just a few final touches to the fisherman. Maybe I'll add a bit of raw sienna into his jacket. So it looks like a sort of waterproof sou'wester or something like that. Um, and um, that's, that's the painting just about finished. Of course, you could have some fishing boats in the distance on the horizon. You could put some birds in the sky or a bird on the jetty or even a person sort of on the jetty standing waiting. Uh, possibilities really are endless um, for these sorts of paintings and it's all good practice uh, especially if it's a sky practice then it's really good to be able to practice other elements as well so even though it looks like there's a fair amount of detail here as you saw it's very very simple it's just a matter of just putting a few marks and stages together in order to create this very effective scene on top of this wet in wet sky practice with the dry brush sparkle across for the water so let's remove the tape and have a look and see how it looks 
and with a clean white border it helps us to see how the painting would look if it was framed or, or matted or mounted and I think it looks quite nice. Um, I'm pleased with this looming cloud and the light that I've got across the horizon as well which um, emphasises and contrasts with the cloud beautifully and although the fishing boat and the fisherman isn't the best I've ever painted um, I think it sort of works to set the scene against the plain geometric patterns of the jetty. So I hope that was helpful. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon for more landscape painting, um, the occasional flower tutorial. And now I'm going to be trying to make this a weekly feature where I do a weekly um, sky practice painting. So I'll see you soon then. And happy painting. Bye.